Hi guys and welcome to episode 1 of sort of a new series, Moving On Up is the title of the series. It's uh, basically a continuation, if you didn't see my quick update video the other day, it's basically a continuation of the Napoli game world. I'm the same manager um, and I've found a new job and that's with Nice of the French League. Um, so we'll get straight into things and just have a look at the history of Nice themselves, just a little bit of history. Um, so they haven't actually won a Ligue 1 title since 1959. They've only ever won it four times and they were all in the 50s. The last time they won a top level competition was the French Cup in 1997 when they beat Guignamp. Um, they've won Ligue 2 a few times since the 1950s but really they haven't actually done that much in terms of winning competitions so that's what I'm here to change hopefully now last season Nice finished 13th in Ligue 1 which is pretty disappointing considering they're near the top end of the table in real life 13th place with only 11 wins 11 draws and then 16 defeats not very good really Let's now just take a quick look at how they did in other competitions they were involved in last season. So they were in Europe, they were in the Europa League. They had a pretty okay group with Zenit St. Petersburg, Copenhagen and Southampton. Um, they managed to get through that group despite a defeat against Southampton and a defeat against Copenhagen. They then got Krasnodar in the first knockout round where they, they beat them 4-3 at home, but then lost 2-0 away and were knocked out by Krasnodar 5-4. On aggregate. In the French Cup they went on an, an okay little run, not really beating anyone major on their way to the quarterfinals, um, where they faced up against Bordeaux and lost on penalties. It was 1-1 at full time and they ended up losing out in the look of the draw that is a penalty shootout. And the final front that Nice were fighting on last season was the Coupe de la Ligue and they were knocked out in the first round they were entered into against Montpellier again on penalties. So penalty is possibly something that we need to look at developing as a, a team. Now just to give you a bit of background, it's the 9th of August in game. I was hired in and around the, about the 25th of July, I think it was, around that time. Um, so there has been a few signings made before I arrived by the previous manager. However, I'm not going to include them in this transfer section. We'll meet them, those players later on if I choose to use them, I guess. Um, so the first signing that I made was Juan Carlos, who is an attacking centre midfielder. We signed him from CFR Cluj. You can see he's only got a, a scout rating of two stars. However, I think he's a bit better than that suggests. He's got 15 technique, 14 passing, and he's, he's pretty much got everything you require in a, a pretty good advanced playmaker. Only 26 years old as well, so... He could be here for a while if he performs well. Um, we have played one time in the league so far this season and he's pulled out a 7.1 rating, which I'm not too disappointed with. It looks like he could be a, a good a good signing for us. And the only other signing that we've made this summer so far, considering the transfer window still open, I'll say so far, is Eli Yuan from FC Nantes. Now, I didn't really know much about this guy, but I noticed when I took the Nice job that Dr. Benji had done it, um, covered Nice in his Who to Manage series, so I had a look there, had a bit of a uh, look at his suggested transfers, and Eli Yuan looked like a good choice, really. Um, so he'll be one of our backup strikers this season. Um, obviously, we've got the main man, Mario Balotelli, who we'll look at a bit later on in the video, um, but he's obviously going to be our starting striker. But Eli Yuan... If I play him enough and he develops enough, it's going to turn into a good player. Now let's take a look at a few of our star players. And we'll start with this guy, Alassane Plier, who is a Mali international. He's got six caps to his name as well as four goals for the Mali national side. Valued at three and a half million pounds. His best position is attack and right midfield, which is unfortunate for the moment because the system that I play doesn't actually have any wingers. So I am thinking about possibly moving him on, but we'll just see how the, the system works for this season. We might move him on at the end of the season. Um, actually, if you want to move him on, we should probably move him on now because his contract expires at the end of the season. So that's possibly something that will happen before the end of this transfer window. But he, he is a quality player. You can see from his attributes and his coach report is three and a half stars. A dribbling 14, first touch 14, technique 14, 
pretty solid player indeed. He's been at Nice since 2014 after joining from Auxerre and I think it's probably very likely that he will be moving on. Next up is one of a few great defenders in this Nice squad, Maxime Le Marchand, who is a French central defender, valued at 2.3 million. He has a coach report which suggests he's three star current ability. He looks like a solid centre back. He's got great tackle in a 15. Marking isn't too bad either, 14. And for a ball playing defender, his passing is quite good too. Up next, another defender and another French defender, in fact, Paul Bice. Coach report says he's a three and a half star ability player. His heading is pretty damn awesome, 16 heading. Marking and tackling, not too bad either, once again, 14. He will actually be our starting right back this season and he is a very experienced defender so should hopefully provide that at the back for us. And the next player we're going to take a look at is Johan Andre, who is actually a new signing at Nice, um, signed by the, the previous management before he left for £2.9 million from Angers. Um, he is a useful fullback, he can play on either side of defence and you can see his marking and tackling at 14 and 13, pretty damn good for a defender. He will be our substitute fullback, but obviously can come in on either side when required. And the final defender that we're going to take a look at at this squad rundown of better players that we have is the Brazilian centre back Dante. Now he's 33 years old, which is a bit upsetting as he is only going to get worse really from this point on. But he is definitely our best defender. He has extremely amazing, just no words to describe how good his marking and tackling are. 18 marking and 18 tackling is just immense. And we will need him this season if we want to put together a good run and challenge for continental football, which is what I would really like to do. Um, obviously, he's probably only going to be here for the one season because he is 33 unless he manages to keep all of his attributes high, in which case I'll, I'll happily have him for a, another year or two. But once he starts going downhill, that's probably the time that I'll look to replace him. You can see he's got about a year and a half left on his contract, so we'll just see how he goes on. And hopefully he does the job for us this season. I'm sure he will, because his, his attributes suggest that he should. Our next key player is actually a loanee. He was again signed by the previous management. He's on loan from Juve, valued at 1.1 million pounds, only 19 years old. He will be one of our starting centre midfielders this season. He has extremely great potential, possible five-star player. Um, if you look at some of his attributes as well, pretty nice for a 19-year-old. Passing of 13, long shots of 12, first touch of 13, technique of 13. And like I said, he'll be our, one of our starting centre midfielders this season. So the, the, the previous manager's actually done pretty well, in my opinion, in terms of signings that he made before I arrived. So I'd, I'd really like to thank him on that one, wherever he is. And next up, we have a promising player, Jean Toral, who is a Spanish national, only 22 years old. Uh, he can play at centre midfield and attack in centre midfield, but we'll be playing him as a central attacking midfielder. Um, he will be one of our starting attacking midfielders for the start of the season and see how he goes on. Hopefully he'll impress. He hasn't really impressed in the first game for us, but you never know. It might, might take him a while to settle in. He should be, due to his age, a key player now and in the long term. He was signed on a free, again another signing that the previous manager made, after he'd been released by Arsenal. So he... he Got released by Arsenal after having a few seasons on loan. He had a season on loan at Birmingham and a season on loan at Granada. And Arsenal just decided not to renew his contract. So our previous manager picked him up. And interestingly enough, he also started his career at Barcelona B. So, I mean, Barcelona have got a pretty good track record of creating good players. So hopefully this guy is going to be another one of them. And the penultimate player that we will take a look at is Clayton, who is a Brazilian striker. He'll be another one of our backup strikers as well as Yuan this season. Um, quality young player with excellent potential. His current ab ability is already three and a half stars. Potential current, ab potential current ability? Potential ability of four and a half stars. He was signed again by the previous management for £4.4 million from Brazilian club side Atletico Mineiro, who he scored six times for in 20 games, which isn't the best return, but it's it's okay. And 
he's, I, I can see him being a star in the future, especially if Balotelli leaves. Which might happen. Maybe not this season, but at some point he will probably leave because he'll probably get angry. And that leads us perfectly into Mr. Why Always Me. Mario Balotelli is the final player that we'll take a look at. Without a doubt, our best player. If we can keep him happy, he could be a real star for us. Current ability of four stars, potential ability is still four stars. 26 year old Italian, you, you all probably know him already. If you don't, where have you been? Have you played for Milan in the past, played for Liverpool, played for Man City? I say played for Liverpool, didn't really play that well. Scored once in 16 games, which isn't the best return once again, but if we can get him scoring, it, well, mainly if we can keep him happy, he should be scoring. Um, one of the first things that actually happened when I took this job was he came to me and wanted to discuss the fact that he wanted to leave. Um, I managed to convince him to stay until the end of the season by promising him that if we didn't qualify for continental football next season, I would let him go at the end of the season. So that's why I say Mario might not be around for much longer, but Clayton and Yuan, we're, we're, we're fine with them. Mario, Mario can go if he doesn't want to stay. But hopefully we do get continental football and then Mario will stay. Hopefully Mario scores loads of goals. And he's already started scoring goals. He scored in his first league appearance, the first game, the only competitive game that we've played. Um, he scored a nice header with that, apparently, according to the commentary. Obviously, I don't watch on 3D, so I can't really look at it, but apparently it was a nice header. Now, I thought since I mentioned the previous manager so much in that last part, I'd show you him and tell you why he left. So he basically left in the middle of July, in the middle of pre-season, to become the Russian national team manager. I, I don't understand it. I guess he's, he's 60, he's heading towards the end of his career. He wants to have a bit, of, a bit more time off during the season, which he gets with that. And I got a new job, so we both win, really. So we'll do a, a quick, and it will be a very quick rundown of the fixtures that we've played so far as Nice manager. We have just had a look. We became manager of Nice on the 29th of July. Um, so we only played one friendly, and that was against KSK Heist. Um, we expected to win, and we got what we expected, an easy victory, and it was really nice to see Mario getting on at the score sheet, as well as everyone else that got on the score sheet. But it was nice to see that the tactic worked, even if it was against lower opponents. And then the first competitive game of the season came around, and that was at home to Lille. And we got off to a great start. Mario Balotelli, like I said earlier, with a bullet header on the 42nd minute to give us a victory, a well-earned victory. We completely controlled the game. 57% of the possession, 21 shots, I think. Only nine of them on target, but that tends to be a, a thing with me on Football Manager. We get lots of shots, but we don't get them all on target. Um, as long as we win, then it doesn't really matter. Um, but Balotelli's performance hopefully suggests that he's going to be a menace to opposition defences this season. That would be very nice indeed, especially as we only play with him up top. Now we'll just take a look at our next opponent, who is actually Dijon. They finished 19th in Ligue 1 last season. 18th, sorry. Not 19th, because they would have been relegated. 18th in Ligue 1 last season, just avoiding relegation by three points in the end. And judging from their opening match against away to Montpellier, to be fair, um, things aren't going to be much better this season. They lost 3-1. They were 2-0 down at one stage, but Florent Balmont, who was their best player last game, apparently, um, managed to get a consolation goal for them before Montpellier went and extended the lead back to a two-goal margin. Um, so yeah, it looks like they could be in trouble this season. Hopefully, we're going to be able to, to beat them easily, but I don't want to underestimate them. So this is the guy that I would pick out as their key man. He is 37 years old, so he's quite an old player. Um, but he did pick up the goal last game, and he also completed 79 out of his 84 attempted passes, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. Um, very experienced centre midfielder, and we'll have to keep an eye on him in the next game. But before we go through our team selection for today's game, I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown of my tactic for this season. So we're playing with a 4-3-2-1 defensive midfield narrow formation. This was a suggested formation by either my, my assistant manager or one of my coaches. 
Um, so basically, we're just trying to take advantage of the creative players that we've got in and around central midfield and attacking midfield to create opportunities for Super Mario up top and also for themselves. And it seemed to work well in the last game. Hopefully, you can do the same today away to Dijon. So the lineup for today is exactly the same as I played against Lille. That game was on Saturday. This game is on Wednesday. I think that game was on Saturday anyway. Yeah, that game was on Saturday. Um, so we have Johan Cardinal in goal, Paul Bais, Dante, Le Marchand and Dalbert in defence. Cyprian is our defensive midfielder today, Vitali and Isaric in central midfield, Toral and Juan Carlos in central attacking midfield and Mario Balotelli, the lone man, the lone ranger up front. On the bench we do have Yuan and Clayton are two striking options and Yuan and Andrew as well of the players that I've, I've mentioned already in this video. A few other players there that I haven't mentioned but I'm sure we'll get to know them as this series goes on. Incidentally, playing with a standard mentality will change that if we need to. Just have a look to see how the game's progressing and no team instructions. So we are the 5-4 favourites for this match. We currently sit in 7th in the table, I haven't mentioned that already. Um, Dijon in 16th. One game gone though, so it doesn't really mean anything at this stage. Dijon are 7-4, draws 11-5. Their key man, according to the... Who is it? It's Yuri Petty from Eurosport. Is this guy, Baptiste Reine, who's actually their goalkeeper. So it says a lot when your key man's your goalkeeper that suggests that he's going to be involved a lot. Hopefully that's the case. I'd, I'd really like to, to be able to test him a lot and test whether he is such a key man for them. Our key man is experienced centre-back and club captain Dante, who is hopefully going to be a rock at the back today. They are playing a 4-4-2 formation, quite defensive midfielders, it looks. Um, Balmont, I know, is a defensive midfielder by trade, so maybe they're going to try and catch us on the counter-attack? I don't know. So, team talk time, and I'm going to assertively say, come on lads, show me what you can do. Everyone's morale is pretty high anyway, everyone's listened keenly or looked delighted, so that is fine with me. Okay, first chance of the game, it looks like it might go to Dijon. That's an excellent cross-field ball. Kufo's got it in the box. Kufo with a chance to cross. Rivier's there, and it's 1-0 to Dijon. We have underestimated these guys, apparently. Johan Rivier with his first goal of the season, and a ball in from Kufo. And not the best start for us. Okay, another highlight now. Iseric with the ball. Incidentally, John Terrell has picked up a knock. It looks like a twisted ankle, according to commentary. Um, but we've still got the ball here. He's still on the field. Juan Carlos plays it back to Cyprian. We're keeping the ball nicely. Can we create something, though? That's what we need. Juan Carlos with the ball. Passes it back to Vitali, And he's fouled by Quentin Bernard. Now, is this good? It's a red card! A two-footed lunge from Quentin Bernard, and that puts us right back into this game. Nothing came from the free kick, disappointingly. Um, I think I'm going to have to take John Terrell off. It's half-time, and he doesn't seem to be recovering well from that injury. So I'll have to do that. I'll do the team talk first, though. And I'm going to aggressively say I expect to see a much better showing, because we haven't really created many chances. I think we've had two shots on goal. Um, and we, we've been in charge of possession from what it looked like last time I looked at the match stats. 60% of possession, but we've actually had six shots on goal now. Three on target. Well, we seem to be creating a bit more, but mm, still haven't scored yet. So John Toral is going to have to make his way off the field, and Clayton, who is naturally a striker, but he can play attack and centre midfield, is going to have to do that for us today. So there's 20 minutes left, and there's been no highlights this second half so far. We've had 10 shots on goal now. We're going to switch to attacking. And we'll not make any changes just yet. We'll see how the, the attacking switch goes. Okay, highlight. Dalbert with the ball. He was man of the match last time out against Lille. Iseric with the ball now, moving forward into space. Iseric shoots, and that's just wide from him. That would have been a pretty good goal, to be fair, but... We need someone to actually score a goal today, please. Okay, just over 10 minutes left, and we are going to make our second change of the day, and it's a bit of a risk. There's only one more attacking substitution I can really do, and that is Eli Yuan, and that would involve taking Super Mario off the field. 
which is what I'm going to do, which is, like I said, a bit of a risk. And we'll also bring on Andrew for Paul Bice, who hasn't really done much at right back today. Hopefully, you and Andrew can impress. So, just under five minutes left now, and we're going to stick it on overload. We don't appear to be anywhere near scoring a goal, and that is what we need. We are playing against a team of 10 men, and we're struggling to have shots on target. Four out of our 13 shots today have gone on target. That is a pretty awful shot to shots on target ratio. Would that be what it was called? I'm guessing so. And we're heading into injury time and it's not looking like there's going to be any more highlights. Is this going to be one or is this just the, the wind down highlight? It's Marie with the ball, gives it to Rufiel. Rufli? Rufli. Simonowski in central to Luthier. So now it's Riviere and Shafik has it on the right hand side. And this is just, that's full time. Full time. We lost. We've lost against Dijon. I mean, I played a unrotated squad, if unrotated is even a word, um, from the, the game on Saturday. So possibly the lads were tired? Um, I guess that must be the reason. A disappointing second half performance from Clayton there. Um, some okay performances from Cyprien, Dalba and Le Marchand, but nobody's really a standout player today and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them off. I'm going to aggressively say I'm not happy with the result. Everyone seems motivated and looks fired up, even Mario Balotelli. I thought he would throw his toys out of the pram of that one. And that's a that's a positive to take from the episode, I guess. But losing 1-0 to a team of 10 men is not a positive, certainly. That knocks us down to 11th in the table. Just one place above Dijon. Obviously level on points with only two games gone. So there is confirmation of Jean Terral being injured. He has a twisted ankle and is out for three to six weeks. Um, but that if I was giving him an injection I'm only going to send him to the physio so he'll be out for three to four weeks which isn't as bad but still disappointing so that is it for this episode hopefully next episode's going to go a little bit better um, so one win and one defeat in our first two games as Nice manager 11th in the table would be better than the guy managed last season he finished 13th so it would be an improvement but obviously we want to finish higher than that um, I didn't actually run through the competition expectations, I've just realised, so we'll have a look at those now. So, in League 1, we're expected to finish in the top half of the table. In the French Cup, we're expected to reach the 11th round. We enter at the 9th round, so we've only got to pick up two wins. And the Coupe de la Ligue, we enter in the third round and we're expected to reach the fourth round, so we only need to win one game in that. But obviously, we'd like to go as far as possible in all the competitions that we enter, um, especially if we're only going to be in top half slash mid table side in league this season so next episode we will do a double live com of the leon and paris saint germain games now don't expect to get much in those two games i'd be happy with two draws to be fair but you never know but that is it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit the like button feel free to leave a comment below let me know what you think of the new series kind of new series um, let me know where you think we're going to finish in the table. Let me know what you think of my signings. Should I keep Balotelli? Should I keep that other player, Alessane Plier? I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to try and sell him. Let's be honest, we, we don't need wingers. But actually, looking at that performance in the last game, possibly we do need wingers. We need to be a bit wider. We are quite narrow. But lots to think about. Um, any ideas of what I should do, whether you think I'm playing too narrow or if you think I need wide players, just let me know in the comments below. Um, subscribe to my channel to get all my content when it comes out and I'll see you next time.